Hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. It is uh, Wednesday night. It's late again. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update as to how things went today. Um, we do have sources on the inside that tell us that there was a lot of phone calls into the governor's office. So thank you very much on that. Very good job. Very good job. Um, you got to know that that does yield the attention of the governor's staff. And if that keeps up two, three, four, five a week, a month, it's really going to get their attention. It's going to make them think, hey, we need to listen to what's going on here. And um, I got to say that uh, a lot of this, what we are doing, is uncomfortable. You know, I've experienced more discomfort with this whole thing than probably um, any other thing that I've done in my life. <clears throat> and I want you to know that when you're making phone calls to the governor's offices, it is... Uh, it's tense. You don't want to do it. It's outside of your comfort zone. But you have to think with your head and not your heart. Your heart's telling you this is uncomfortable and I don't want to do it. Please override that and do this. This is your duty to do this, to make your voice known. Um, not voting for a man because he refuses to uh, uphold the Constitution, which is the law of this land, is your duty. It's not, I think I'll do this. It's your duty. I was talking with a guy earlier tonight, and he said, you know, a lot of people are just in their own little world, and they're fat, dumb, and happy, and this doesn't affect them, so they're not going to do anything. Um, a lot of people that are going to hear my voice, because this goes out to thousands of people, you're, you're in that category. Sorry about the fat and dumb part, but um, it doesn't affect you. But any time a person's constitutional rights are trounced, it does affect you. It, it definitely does. That is taboo, trouncing someone's constitutional rights. Absolutely taboo. We don't do that. And that's why our country has gotten to the point where we are right now. I mean, as far as um, all the good that we've done is because of our Constitution. But lately things haven't been so good, and it's because people's constitutional rights are being trounced. And uh, because uh, Americans have gotten a little bit self-serving, or at least the ones that are in positions of power. And that's, that's really too bad. One of the things that could be mentioned when you call the governor's office is that he needs to uh, rescind the in, entire ISO. Um, as we will go into at a later date, the ISO and the declaratory ruling work together. They have to be together. Um, Cray divorced one from the other because D Judge Sulka said, hey, this declaratory ruling, this is unconstitutional. And Cray's like, yeah, but he didn't say the ISO was unconstitutional, so we'll keep that one. And the problem is with the ISO, if you read it, how are they going to enforce it? Under, How will we know if we're in compliance or not? So that's why the uh, declaratory ruling was issued in the first place, so you can know if you're in compliance. Okay, so uh, please continue to do that. Uh, there's a couple other things. All right. Um, it's it's pretty easy to get the governor's schedule, right, and find out where he's going to speak. And a lot of times, because a lot of the issues are so damn boring and uh, no one cares about them, uh, you can go and you can raise your hand and you can ask questions. But one of the things they hate is when this feral swine issue is brought up in forums that have to do with housing or whatever else. But And I know it's it's a tough thing to do. To get in your car and drive someplace but you got to know the price of freedom is tough and people have done a lot tougher things and there are those of you out there that would really like doing that too but when you get them in a public forum and you ask them you know what what about the uh the feral swine thing is that resolved and how did that get resolved and things like that okay that's just a tidbit there's not another thing too that i think is very important uh on this youtube channel you can put comments and some of the comments have been really good um, 99 and 44 one hundredths have been very good um, if it suits you when you call the governor's office and you're given a response because they have canned things that these people are supposed to say I mean these these kids that work there they they don't know about the feral swine thing most of them are interns um, if you could jot those down and then record that for us on the YouTube comments section. And that way other folks 
can say, oh, I got that response too. And it'll build kind of a network of, uh, you know, the, the list of probable responses. I always kind of think of, uh, well, never mind. I can go off on that. Um, but we're doing well. Uh, we can keep this up. I know that I haven't said much about my um, candidacy for county sheriff. Um, I've just been busy getting the farm back going, and uh, it's, it's taken a lot of effort. But I will tell you right now there's going to be a fundraiser here at the farm on the 21st day of July. That is a Sunday. We're going to have Chris Ann Hall here. Uh, if you don't know who she is, check her out on YouTube. She is just a premier constitutionalist, lecturer, uh, lawyer, um, prosecutor, just an all-around good gal. I've heard her speak three times now. Very impressed. And I'm working on getting Sheriff Richard Mack to come. And uh, maybe um, Brad Rogers out of uh, in Elkhart, Indiana. Maybe we're going to try on that. But it should be a good day. We'll probably, you know, do our usual thing, have a bunch of food and, uh, and network about things like freedom and um, what the Constitution means to us and actually how to wield that Constitution as if it were a sword which it is. Okay, this Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm and uh, keep the effort up. Thank you.